What do Jackie Robinson, Justin Timberlake, and Elvis Presley all have in common? They were born in January. But is that all? Find out next on Top of the Morning. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Chris Anderson. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Top of the Morning. Many famous people, and of course, not so famous people, were born in the month of January. And we have the great pleasure in this country of celebrating the birthday of one of the most famous Americans, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But January is also the month that has been named Human Trafficking Prevention Month and Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. Under President Bush in 2007, the U.S. Senate designated January 11th as National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. And eventually, January was designated to bring awareness to the issue of human trafficking. To talk to us about human trafficking issues is our first guest today, Director of Advocacy and Education for Rebuilding Hope and the Sexual Assault Center for Pierce County, Carlin T Sampson. Carlin, thank you so much for joining of us Of course, today. thank you for having me. We really appreciate it. We know there's been a lot in the news about this issue, uh, really both issues. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's first, just by, by talking about the scope of the human trafficking problem, specifically right here in Western Washington mm -hmm. and Pierce County, how big is it and is it getting do you see it getting worse as time goes by? Great question. I don't know necessarily necessarily if we see it getting worse. It is a larger problem that I think a lot of the Pierce County residents and community members are aware of, mostly because of some misperceptions about what human trafficking is by definition and what it looks like region to region. Um, it's, it's large because it happens in multiple different forms. We have human trafficking, sex trafficking specifically that I can speak to that uh, involves the majority of the victims are youths from our community. So it's not necessarily as wide scope of an international sex trafficking trafficking trade as a lot of people assume it to be. It can be and that is a small percentage of our caseload. But a lot of what we see is um, third party style exploitation or trafficking which is operated a lot by some of our um, gangs that are in the area. So looking at a lot of um, guerrilla style pimping or independent pimps but that are part of gangs that are relevant to this location. We see a lot of family based exploitations um, where families who that's the, the way that they were able to keep a roof over their heads, food on the table, it's just taught intergenerationally. We see a lot of um, peer based exploitation where even youths in middle school, high school settings are learning to um, request sexual favor, sexual acts in exchange for anything of value that can be drugs, food, uh, anything like that. So when you look at the federal definition of what commercial sexual exploitation looks like, it is pretty rampant in these areas because you have to look at what are the different types of trafficking that can take place with the youths and the young adults that are here. Let's talk about the relationship between uh, human trafficking and sexual assault. Sure. Uh, what, basically in a nutshell, what is that? Are they, are they one in, it, it, it's more than just sexual assault? It is, so you can consider it this way. Sexual assault is kind of the larger umbrella that encompasses a variety of different types of sexual crimes. When you look at sexual assault, the, the easy definition is that it's any form of unwanted sexual contact. So that can include crimes such as rape or attempted rape, or it could be unwanted sexual touching, even if it's over somebody's clothing. Sex trafficking can be considered a form of sexual assault. So that's why we have adopted sex trafficking services into our sexual assault center because it falls under that, that umbrella. When you're looking at sex trafficking, it's any type of a commercial sexual act or exchange in exchange for anything of value that could be, again, protection, um, food, money, shelter, when you're looking at survival sex. If it's happening to anybody who's under the age of 18, so any type of minor, it's automatically considered um, legally a form of human trafficking. If somebody's over the age of 18, there has to be legal terms that can be met in terms of proving force, fraud, or coercion is happening. So somebody's being physically forced into the commercial sex trade, whether that's prostitution, um, if that's webcamming, even if it's other forms of the commercial sex trade, like um, stripping, anything like that. So that's kind of how they're, they are interrelated, but they are still considered kind of separate. Tell me about the role poverty plays in all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a role that you can see as a risk factor, if you will, indicating if somebody is at higher risk of being vulnerable for being um, groomed into the trafficking into the trafficking realm, if you will. There's, uh, trafficking can happen to any youth regardless. It does not discriminate. When we're looking at our caseload and people find out where we get, what types of schools and school districts we get referrals from, 
a lot of people think, oh, I can't believe somebody from this school or this community could be trafficked, but we see that it does disproportionately affect um, especially youths of color, youths who come from low socioeconomic statuses, and very disproportionately um, LGBTQ youths and even male youths. So that's a little bit of the relationship we see between our clients and the, um, I guess, the contextual backgrounds that they come from. So there, there is a relationship there. We've, we've been talking a lot about sex trafficking mm -hmm. uh, and its involvement with, with human trafficking or, mm -hmm. uh, or human trafficking involved with sexual assault. Mm -hmm. But there's one area that doesn't seem to get as much attention right. uh, by the media, and, and it's uh, labor trafficking. Right, right. Tell me about the scope of that specifically. How big of a problem is that right here in our area? Right here in our area, and I will admit to, I'm not an expert on this, uh, again, speaking to the, the short-sightedness that we even have in our community. Um, labor trafficking, from what I understand, is very prevalent in some of the more rural areas of our county, um, where there's maybe um, farming industry that's taking place, so you're looking at undocumented individuals, or maybe even documented individuals, who are just being forced into really um, gruesome, working environments with low to no wages. They are possibly being um, physically abused where there's the overlap between the sex trafficking and labor trafficking is if they're also being sexually exploited in their labor trafficking experience as well. It's just, it's tough. It's tough to go properly identified and I don't know if there's enough um, formal awareness or even funding in place for organizations to step forward and really tackle it for as large of an issue as it is. What about the community's attitude toward this problem? Mm -hmm. Do you think more needs to be done at a community level to bring awareness, to bring people to come out and, 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 and report that they are being trafficked, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's labor or sexual or anything else? Mm -hmm. What do you think the community's response is right now? Do you think, it, do, do you think people are doing enough or there's more people can do? And if so, what can be done? No, great question. I would say there's definitely been a great surge and an improvement from community members and wanting to know more about what this is, whether it's labor trafficking, sex trafficking, or human trafficking in general. Um, I think that there can be greater competency around where people are seeking their education awareness from. There's great, there's a great amount of information that can be found by Googling, but there's also a lot of misleading information mm, through Googling. Right. So we have great um, community-led coalitions. There's a Pierce County Coalition Against Trafficking here in this area that has monthly meetings. It's a lot about outreach, education awareness. They bring great training groups in so that uh, you know citizens from across Pierce County or other counties can get that information. They also do public awareness events. Uh, Washington Engage, formerly, that's what it was what formerly known as now it's Washington Trafficking Prevention. They develop prevention curriculum that can be accessible to community members or organizations. So I always encourage people that if you want to become aware, don't just unnecessarily um, resign and looking at you know Netflix documentaries or Googling, but get involved with your community and find out what's happening here locally. That way you can find out you know who to donate to, who to volunteer your time to, and find out even legislatively or policy-wise what steps are we missing here that they can, that people can go to their legislators or they can go to their elected officials and say, we need to see changes here. What are some of the signs, now that we've talked about all this, what would be some of the signs that somebody is being trafficked, trafficked. Or, or, or sexually abused? What, what are some of the typical signs somebody can look for? Sure, um, well, gosh, that's such a, when we're looking at the connection between child sexual abuse and then what that leads as a as kind of a gateway introduction to being higher like having a higher vulnerability to being groomed into trafficking it's astronomical the vast majority of our clients who we get introduced to through trafficking referrals we found out they have childhood history of physical and or sexual abuse so i encourage people if especially if they are pro as professionals in mandated reporting positions they need to be accessing either supports through our agency or the children's advocacy center to find out how to get formally educated on through a trauma-informed lens what child abuse is how to identify it and how to respond effectively and then on the other side in terms of finding out how to identify sex trafficking when they see it you know it's these days so much of it is online it we sometimes we get calls from people saying I see a youth just kind of hanging around on a street corner are they being trafficked well that could indicate that something's happening but more often than not um, it's too vague of a factor, so we talk to people about, look for suspicious businesses. If you're seeing a lot of suspicious activity in and out of motels or hotels, that's a great tip to call into law enforcement. Um, massage parlors, I know there's been lots of sting operations to investigate what's happening in massage parlors. 
call those tips in. What we really stress is that you're looking for red flags with youths that are being groomed into the life, into exploitation, that is, that are oftentimes runaway or truant youth, so they're missing a lot of school. Um, some other red flags is that they, if they're uh, underage, they have a lot of older associations, maybe older boyfriends, older significant others. Um, they have things like multiple cell phones on them all the time. They disappear for weekends at a time. Uh, there's lots of random red flags that can come up, and we tell people if you're seeing more than one, call into our agency, call our hotline, and we're happy to debrief with you, and then we can make a referral to law enforcement or the prosecuting attorney's office about just tips like that, but it also lets us know what to look out for as we're receiving referrals for our clients. In our last minute, sure. what can somebody do if they need to get help? Talk about uh, your organization a little bit. Sure, if they need to get help, um, I would say here locally, they can contact our 24-hour hotline. That's 253-474-7273. That's staffed with local sexual assault and trauma-informed advocates from this area. Our trafficking program specifically has a hotline that's answered business day, business hours, 253-444-5351. They can also access our Facebook program website, which is yes to hope two separate words, and that's a great way to send a confidential message to us, or go through our website, straplaw.org, and clients can self-refer through that confidential portal as well. So multiple different ways. And you guys do offer counseling we do. and some guidance. We do, yep. We offer confidential client-led and driven advocacy and therapy services for both the primary victim and their family members and friends, and ongoing professional consultation for other professionals involved in their cases. Well, Carolyn, thank you. Carlin, I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at a less conventional, but no less inspirational way of confronting issues of human trafficking. Stay with us. Welcome back to Top of the Morning. Our next guest believes that divine inspiration was the catalyst to starting a unique venture. With the help of her husband and many dedicated people, she is able to fight human trafficking and extreme poverty in an entrepreneur way. Take a look. Hello, welcome to Purpose. Purpose, I believe, is helping many different people. I think Purpose is helping women that are shopping and um, really just want a purposeful experience. We're kind of helping them um, put their style together, their looks together, we're building relationship, relationships with them, and then we're really helping women around the world that have been victims of trafficking and extreme poverty by helping them have dignified work. So a lot of the products that we sell are made directly by these women that were formerly victimized and now they're stepping into transitional income and able to provide for themselves. I started Purpose because I wanted to take um, my love for fashion and my love for shopping and kind of add a bigger purpose or meaning to it so that it didn't feel as vain. Please welcome to the show founder and president of Purpose Boutique, Christy Johnson. Christy, thank you so much for joining You're us today. Welcome. We appreciate Thanks. you taking the time to be here on top of the morning. First, let's talk about this is a very unique business that you have here. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, let's let's talk about what inspired you to to open this. So what 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 got your what, what got you wanting to do this? I would say I think it's this idea that I think everyone wants to make a difference in the world or do something good, but not everyone really has the skill sets to do that. If you look at like human trafficking or poverty, I mean, it takes a specific skill set to go in and fight that. And so I was just kind of brainstorming, like, what are some things that I'm naturally good at? Like, I'm great at shopping. 
which is kind of embarrassing, but hey, say you're really good at something like shopping or style or making something look pretty, putting it together, and then um, attach the meaning or attach a bigger purpose to it. And so that kind of gave me this idea of, well, let me do something I'm naturally good at, but then make a difference in the world and put those together, which equals purpose. Let's talk about your motto, uh, how shopping can change a life. Yeah. How is uh, purpose helping to fight traffic, human trafficking, traffic is another detail, mm -hmm. human trafficking and extreme poverty? So we, when we say how you shop can change a life, um, we do that through a couple different ways. The first is we donate a percentage of every sale to fight human trafficking. So we donate to Rescue Freedom International, and they're working um, locally in the U.S. and also internationally to help free women from trafficking. Um, and then the second way we do it, which is um, really exciting because this is the one I'm super passionate about. It's this idea that when these women come out of um, trafficking, they're, not, no, they're no longer victims. They're in like a safe house or in a program. Um, after the counseling and the education and helping them kind of get back on their feet, they've got this um, opportunity to create or make something that they can sell which then gives them dignified work. So at Purpose, we love to find those brands all around the world that we can actually carry in our store that are made by former victims. And so when we're selling them to our customers, we say, you know, you're actually directly supporting this woman um, by purchasing the work that she's made with her hands, you know, that dignified work. So. so you were talking about finding these. Let's talk about how you go about locating these vendors. Well, you start with um, maybe just finding one. Like the first one I found, it's called Starfish Project. They're located out of Asia. And I realized the, the actual jewelry pieces were, um, they were affordable and they were pieces that I would want to wear. And so I was able to kind of get into that brand and start carrying that one. And then that leads you to, you know, other people that they're connected to that are doing the same thing. And then you go online and then when you go to the, buying shows, you know, we have to go to big, big shows to do our purchasing for the store. You just find these brands as you're walking through and learning about their mission. And so those are some ways. So you started this business in 2013. Yes. And uh, now it's as hard as it is to believe, almost five years later, it's 2018. Yeah. And it's, it's coming up a uh, fall of 2013, if I'm correct, or summer. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of differences are you seeing your business have? Well, I think what's what's so cool about the last um, five years is that I, I didn't start with this big picture or this mission of, of freeing women from trafficking through business. I did start with, um, let me help women and children around the world by donating. And so it's cool to see how business over time, if you really view business in a way that's, that's dignified, the way that I think business should be done, you can start to see ways that you can make it more holistic. So I think over the years as we started donating the money and then I'm watching people come and shop and then people share like, have you ever thought about where your products are made or, or um, you know, who made your products? Like the story behind that. And I was like, oh, I have it. And just to watch the development of my knowledge and, you know, what I'm learning through business and other people being a part of it, I've watched that grow. And then also just learning how to be really good at business so people want to come shop with you and having great product and great service, all of that plays into this bigger picture. And so I would say over the last five years, I would never imagine that we are where we are today if you had if you had said, okay, you would have these three awesome stores in five years with these 40 employees that are helping you on this in this fight against human trafficking, I would have been like, no way. And now we look back and I, we've been able to donate, you know, $68,000 in this time just to these organizations that are working to do this. And then um, we've sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of these accessories that have been made by these former victims. So it's exciting. I noticed on your website, it looks like it's, you know, you're a, you're a boutique, you're a store. Yes. But it looks like you offer much more than just shopping. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yes. So the, the big picture of um, fighting human trafficking, that's actually done through our customers. So we're not the ones that are really giving the money. The customers are coming in and, and spending that money and choosing to shop with us. And so our biggest focus really in order to do our job well is to serve that customer. So what we offer is a lot of personal styling, head to toe. Um, we're not just a, you know, this big human trafficking, That that's not our only focus and picture because in order to um, teach people that business can change lives you need to actually do business really well and for a boutique to do business really well um, we have to love each of our customers teach them 
and just be really great at what we do and then offer them a girlfriend style shopping experience. So our whole mission is um, we offer a girlfriend style shopping experience with products that change lives. What is a girlfriend style shopping experience? Well, it's when the person walks in, you immediately become their friend, their girlfriend. So you're like, hello, welcome. You know, it, it's a new friend right away. And then you find out, you know, what do they do? Where are they from? What's their life like? And so then once you start to learn more about them, you can start to become a friend and then you can start to guide them down their style journey and then also educate them on the power of their shopping choices. So. Speaking of, of friends and, and people helping out, if anyone's interested in, in working or helping out with your organization, organization, how can they stop by? How can they help? How can they, how can they get involved? Well, I would say the number one way they could help is to come shopping <laughs> because that grows, you know, the whole business. I mean, if they're interested in being a part of Purpose, they can always go to the website and just, um, you know, send us an email. Can, we have a little place that people can connect with us through that or social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, you could just reach out and then see where it goes from there. Have there been any special events you guys have put up and done uh, over the last, well, almost five years now? Yes, so we do a lot of um, different activities each month, really. We have an event. We have a big winter sale coming up to get ready for spring. So that's um, February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And then we'll have an event, you know, in February around Valentine's Day. We do a huge anniversary sale just to celebrate um, the impact the company's had by saying thank you to our customers. We put on a really big, fun sale weekend for them. And that's always um, in August, July or August. So lots of ways. Do you uh, typically get a lot of good feedback from the community with what you're doing? We do. We, we get a lot of good feedback. And then in any instances where we, we don't get great feedback, that's an awesome learning opportunity for us, a growth opportunity. So when we get a good Yelp review, it's, it's awesome. If we get one that's not as great, we then go back and say, okay, how can we make this better and how can we make this a wonderful experience for this customer? With this being such a, a, uh, a, a new way to approach business, what are some of the challenges you've run into? I would say that the challenge is that there's so many people when you talk about human trafficking or fighting against it and they know that that's what our business does, um, they kind of want to say, well, what about this? Or have you thought about putting on this event? Or have you thought about partnering with this organization or giving here? And, and you kind of look at all these wonderful opportunities in front of you and you think, I want to do it all. and one one story that I, I love sharing, it's an analogy um, that the, actually the president of Rescue Freedom shared this with, with our team one day, and it was this idea of a river. So if you look at human trafficking and you look at, you just picture a river in front of you, and you look and you see there's people drowning. There's like women and children drowning in front of you. And so you think, okay, I want to go and like pull these women out and save them and these children. And then as you're going there and you're looking at that, you look up you know, the bank, and then you notice that there's a waterfall, and then you see that there's people like throwing women and children into the river. And so you're thinking, well, no, I need to go up there and I need to like, you know, stop this or like beat these people up to get them to stop doing this. And then you look down at the end of the river and then you see these, um, these rescue people that are there like pulling them out and trying to save them and you think oh I should go I should go and do that and if you look at it that way with that picture you realize everybody has a part in fighting human trafficking but you can't do them all so you really have to find like what's your lane where can you focus because if I focus especially in my business on the lane that I'm the best at then I'm gonna have a greater impact and so I think learning that has been really helpful learning that you know my role in this fight is through business and doing business really well it keeps me focused and that's been you know a really great thing for me to kind of experience and learn along the way that is just a, that's a great story it's really an interesting business the way you've set this up the way you're going about it it, it uh, you know our, our hats off to you we really hope uh, all the best for you now if somebody wants to visit one of your locations where are they we have Kirkland Washington downtown um, Ruston well Tacoma Ruston way and um, Silverdale, Kitsap County, and the trails. Well, thank you, and thank you for joining us uh, today. And when we come back, we'll have a few closing thoughts. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us today. If you would like more information about this program or the Bates Broadcasting Video Program, please contact www.bates.ctc.edu slash broadcasting. And if you have an idea or a topic for the top of the morning and would like to us to consider it, please contact us. We'll see you next time on Top of the Morning. I'm Chris Anderson.